Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Colton, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how we can take our low resolution images, our six megapixel, our eight megapixel, and dramatically increase the resolution while still maintaining the look of the image and not uh, having it pixelate or anything like that. Now you might be wondering why and how we're gonna do that. First off, we're gonna do that through Adobe's software and that is a program called Super Resolution, or rather a feature called Super Resolution within Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. And the reason that we might wanna do this is to break the limitation of how large we can print from those files. So if you have a camera that is a favorite of yours that's low resolution for me, that would be something like the Olympus E300 or E500 that are only eight megapixels there's a bit of a limitation on how large I can print. And with this software, I can increase the size of that file as far as the resolution goes, uh, basically four times as many pixels and be able to print much larger resolution images. So I have some videos out there uh, asking, is eight megapixels enough? Um, or essentially, are these low resolution cameras still worth shooting on? And one of my big things that I always talk about is how really most of the time you're not going to be printing large and most of the time you're gonna be posting to social media and social media is usually done on much smaller screens. And so a three megapixel or six megapixel image on your cell phone screen is gonna look totally fine. So that is still true, but in the event that you do want a higher resolution version, whether that be to print or to put on a website or whatever, this will be a viable option. This is also a great topic to cover because this is going to use AI technology. And earlier this year, I talked about how I wanted to take a look at AI technology and what all we can use it for in photography. One of those videos that I created back in June was a video where I went out to shoot lightning and all of the thunderstorm happened behind me and not in front of the camera. So I had plenty of lightning, but it wasn't hitting where I needed it to hit. I still got a great image of this theater and I wanted to have that lightning in the shot. And I figured, hey, rather than this be a time where I failed to get the lightning in the shot, this can be an opportunity for us to try out the ability of AI to add elements into a photograph. And so we used AI to add the lightning bolt pretty convincingly. So that was one uh, aspect of exploring AI. This video is the other aspect where we're gonna take an image. We're not really gonna change the image in terms of changing the color or adding in anything. We're simply going to increase the resolution. We're gonna uh, increase the length two times, the width two times, for a full four times as many pixel uh, improvement, I guess you could say, to the photograph. So uh, we're gonna be doing this in Adobe. Again, there are other tools out there and we may explore those other tools in another video, but for this video, we're gonna be specifically looking at the super resolution feature within the enhance aspect of Adobe Lightroom. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer. All right, hey everyone, we're over at the computer now and we're gonna make the actual enhancements to these images. So this first one is an eight megapixel image that I shot on the Olympus E300. And then the second image here is an image that I shot on the much newer Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III and it is a 16 megapixel image. But both of these we want to enhance. I wanna show you what that process looks like. So we'll go back to our first image here. And this is pretty simple. We just need to right click. And then in this menu, there is an option for enhance. We'll select that. And it will take a moment to load our preview. But enhance actually has a few different options available. It's an AI tool. So we can do things like denoise if we want to remove noise from an image rather than use a more manual method. And then there's also a feature called raw details. This is specific to raw files and it's even specific to certain raw files. So it doesn't work for every single raw file out there. 
Um, but this essentially keeps the resolution the same, but just adds in detail uh, using AI. And then there's super resolution. And super resolution will actually increase the total pixel count by four times. So it's actually increasing the resolution and the size of the image. It also does add in a little bit of detail. So it kind of has the raw details aspect added into it as well. Now, uh, this can only be done one time. So meaning that it's going to actually create a brand new file, a DNG file that will be the higher resolution version of this picture. You cannot then enhance the enhanced version. So you can only do it once. But if you accidentally delete that file, you can always go back to the original file and enhance it all over again. Um, it's also very GPU intensive. So if you have a integrated graphics or just like a really low end graphics card, um, it's probably going to take a good bit to render this or, or to create it. Um, since I'm using a higher end GPU, it's estimating only one second to do this. So that's uh, very acceptable for me. Uh, and then really the only option you have here is whether to stack the two files or not. So we'll go with a stack first so you can see what that looks like. And so I can show you how to unstack it if you don't like that. Um, it is really just for organization. It doesn't affect the photo. It's just what do you want to do with the original file? You're just going to tuck it in under the new file. So let's go ahead and hit enhance and it will take just a second to create the new version and boom, it's already done. And if you look in the bottom left here, we still have just one image preview and that's because the original image is now tucked underneath the new enhanced image. If I don't like that, if I wanna compare the two, one thing I can do is right click, go to stacking and just click unstack. And now we have them side by side instead of on top of each other. So again, doesn't affect the photo, just allows you to um, organize the images that are down here. So. This is the enhanced version that we're looking at now. And this is the original. So original, enhanced. I gotta say, from the very high level of view, they look pretty much the same, other than I can already tell with the enhanced version, there's just a teeny bit more detail from this very wide out view but where we can really see this detail is if we zoom in this is the enhanced version i gotta say this looks pretty good like i'm seeing things on this image that i've never seen before like this dead pixel down here um, if we jump over to the original this is as close as we can get right? We can't zoom in quite as far. And obviously there's still good detail here, uh, but we're just limited in how uh, the resolution is versus on this one. I got, it really keeps the integrity of the image the same. I'm not seeing a ton of like weird artifacts or weird like AI related stuff. So this is really cool. And the benefit here is now we can take this image, the enhanced version that's probably around 32 megabyte equivalent um, or megapixel equivalent. And uh, we can now print this on a much larger print without it looking pixelated or stretched or, or you know, uh, or quality in general. Uh, whereas on this original file, we can probably do like an eight by 10, pretty good. I've printed this up to an 11 by 14 and it looks decent. It's it's not as good as the eight by 10, but it's, it's okay. But now with this enhanced version, I could go beyond 11 by 14 and really print big and have it look really nice. So that's the eight megabyte, megapixel. I don't know why I keep saying megabyte. That's the eight megapixel. Let's jump over to the 16 megapixel and we'll repeat the process. So we'll go enhanced. And then what I'll do for this one is I will uncheck stacked image. So you can see that if you don't have that, it just 
natively puts them next to each other. Uh, and then otherwise we're going to do super resolution. And again, it's saying it's going to take about a second to do. And so we'll click enhance. And it's already done. So now we're looking at the enhanced version. And then this is the original. And I can actually see on this one, and no surprise, there's so many little pieces of sugar on this piece of candy that it's really going to be even more apparent. This is the original. And then this is the enhanced version. There is a little bit more detail there. But again, it's where we zoom in and look at this really still looks great. I don't see any weird, you know, artifact or or like weird shapes or anything. It just looks like it's higher detail. And then this is the original version, which also has a lot of great detail in it as well. But now we have an even higher resolution version that we can print much, much larger. All right, so that is the process of converting the low resolution image into a super resolution image. Very simple to do, and the results are pretty convincing and they look like it's gonna be successful. But we have still only looked at it in the digital world through a screen on a computer. The true test is to actually print this image out and see what it looks like. And to really make this a full test, I'm gonna print both the enhanced resolution version and also the original eight megapixel version on the same size large print. When we get those printed, we should be able, and this is my prediction, we should be able to see very clearly which one is the higher resolution and which one is the lower resolution. So I'm gonna send these images off to be printed at my local uh, camera shop and then we'll pick them up and see what the final result is between the original file and the enhanced file. All right, so it's been a few days. I have the photos back from the photo lab and oddly enough, they look identical. Uh, I was able to pick out the higher resolution version in a sort of blind test, but being that there's only two, that could also just be random luck that I was able to do that. Even if there is a bit of a difference, it's so, so minor. I had originally left a note on the eight megapixel print basically saying, hey, this image might come out not looking so great. That's to be expected. Don't waste any time like trying to fix it. Uh, I know about that going into it. I'm doing kind of a test. And so they called me and they're like, hey, we saw your note, but these images look identical. And it's like, oh, I definitely initially thought I must have been dumb and sent them the same file. I didn't, I did send them the two separate files. Um, but in talking with them, it sounds like maybe what happened is that they take those files and they process them through Adobe before they print them. And so I think what maybe happened is on that eight megapixel file, it ended up getting upscaled in order to be printed. So I might have ended up with two upscaled files being printed, which would explain why they both look the same. But I can also say they look great. They're actually even a little bit better than some of the smaller prints I've done with the original eight megapixel file. So the upscaling definitely worked. It's a shame that we didn't get to see the um, immediate contrast between the two, but it's a benefit that I ended up with two great ones instead of one that I was gonna have to throw away after this video. So uh, yeah, at, at the end of the day, this is a very viable tool if you're looking to upscale some of your lower megapixel images to print them. It's definitely gonna work best if you use a raw file and if you have a good quality photo, but if you're wanting to take some older photos that you have or newer photos, if you're still like me using some of these older cameras and print them large or use them in a variety of situations, then this is a feasible way to do so. And of course, there are other tools out there that can do this same thing. So if there's some other AI upscalers that you want me to check out, drop those in the comments below and I'll do my best to get a hold of those and run a video on them. Um, if you feel like I deserve it, give me a thumbs up. 
And if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. I do post a video every single week and that will keep you in the know for when the next video drops. But for now, I'm Colton. I'll see you in the next one.